one, Tim. I first want to express my appreciation to John Podesta for his terrific organization sponsoring this event. It has just been an outstanding morning and an hour into the afternoon. I have had the good fortune of knowing Tim Worth for several decades. I told uh, one of the people in the other room as we were getting ready to come in here, one of the assets that Tim has always had is such a great presence. And he really had the presence there today. He conducted such a good meeting. It was fair and uh, with the authority that only a Tim Worth can direct. Appreciate that very much. And of course, the glue that's been holding this together now for several months is T. Boone Pickens. He literally has put his money where his mouth is. And uh, I am so um, impressed with getting to know Boone Pickens and then to be able to say to myself, Boone Pickens and Harry Reid are friends. And I say that very sincerely. <coughs> we had a gathering in Las Vegas in August. It was a tremendously important meeting. People thought that would be the end of our operation. But this now is the elaboration of that. What we learned in Las Vegas is, first of all, places like Nevada can be energy independent. And we also learned that we can only become energy independent if we do something to be able to pass that electricity around the country. Now, we've called it a smart grid. Secretary Chu, who has won a Nobel Prize for his brain, uh, said, I don't like that name. What it is, it's just a highway to transmit electricity. And that's what it is. And that's, I'm introducing legislation this week. It's going to be bipartisan legislation. We're going to move this forward to allow America to produce its own electricity. As we've learned, and I was so happy today to hear Vice President Gore and Boone Pickens speaking from the same sheet of music. We need, in addition to this great asset that we have of renewable energy, and to move it wherever we need it. We need to have a bridge to get us where we need to go with renewables. And that's going to be for small vehicles, batteries, and for the big trucks, we're going to do it with natural gas. I've had the good fortune of meeting someone that Boone introduced me to, the head of Swift Trucking. Uh, that's a good place for us to start. It's, all, it's already going on. We just need to give incentives for these companies to move to these new uh, engines that will be driven by natural gas, which we have our own. We don't have to import a single ounce of that, a single drop of that. It can all be done right here. So this is a great conference. We're going to move forward and uh, do some great things for the American people. I think it's Tim Worth now. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Leader. At the uh, Energy Summit last year, uh, it was uh, the problems of transmission were identified as one of the central barriers to achieving the kind of renewable future that we'd like to see. Um, many of us have been working on this issue for a long, long time, and we've had two basic problems. One, everybody agrees that this is a problem, but people weren't willing to come together. And suddenly, you know, over the last year, for a variety of reasons, people have come together into this quite extraordinary coalition that we saw uh, in the other room all morning long. A coalition agreeing to solve the problems of siting, a very complicated issue. Uh, the regulatory tangle, another very complicated issue. The sharing of the financing, a third uh, a very complicated issue. And a fourth, how all of this deals with two other broad national concerns, security and the looming climate crisis. These are a very complicated soup, but it's not going to be solved if we spend more time, all of us sitting around admiring the problem. The time is to stop admiring that problem and starting to come around and work on that problem. So the coalition being built was accomplishment number one. And the second, for which we are deeply indebted to Boone Pickens and to Al Gore and to others, was to bring the kind of attention to the problem that this problem needs. 
the grid can be an anesthetizing issue. People just look at you and you talk about the grid and they, oh my Lord. It, Boone Pickens has given it a kind of attention, a kind of an edge that really makes it again as interesting as it is and as important as it is. Now, now it's our job to support Senator Reid and his great efforts to put together uh, the coalition and to put together the legislation and to get that legislation passed. We at the Energy Future Coalition are so pleased to have worked for a long time with John Podesta and the Center for American Progress. We now want to now make this a reality and I think uh, this morning uh, was a very, very important milestone on the way toward achieving this sort of legislation that uh, we absolutely need and want now. Thank you. When I started the Pickens plan and kicked off on July the 8th, 2008, I really didn't know where it was going. I knew the story had to be told to the American people that we had a, a energy crisis in this country. So here we are, 40 years with no energy plan. And now, due to the leadership of uh, Senator Reid and Speaker Pelosi and uh, President Obama, we're going to have an energy plan for America. And uh, that, you know, I'm a guy 80 years old, and I, I, saw, I saw it all the way, 40 years, no plan. Uh, I always wanted a plan, and now I'm going to see a plan. And uh, that's great, and I, I have to say it, uh, that, well, uh, I didn't say anything about uh, my relationship with John Podesta. We, we have worked on this and, and passed paper back and forth on what should go to the transition team and all and what, uh, how we could have a plan that would really make sense. So anyway, it's been a great honor for me to be associated with, with uh, Senator Worth and Senator Reed and John Podesta. Thank you. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I, the Center for American Progress Action Fund sponsored today's event. We we're, we we're happy to do so, but I, I think we're very pleased with the outcome. Uh, I think that uh, one of my takeaways is we've gone from whether we're going to build a new green economy that's going to create jobs, and we're down to the hard work of how's that, jo how's that going to get uh, done. The, uh, the recovery and reinvestment bill that the President just signed uh, certainly triggered that massive investment in, in a new uh, energy future. Uh, but now I think we need to uh, go further and deal with the, uh, the difficult, sometimes uh, challenging policy issues that are going to be in, in, embedded in, in, uh, in Senator Reid's bill to, to get more renewables on the, on the grid, to get this new, bigger, better, uh, smart grid built. Uh, the, I, I would say uh, a second observation is the remarkable consensus that was displayed uh, at today's meeting. Uh, we had uh, the uh, federal regulators and the state regulators uh, in, in uh, finding common ground. We had business and labor. We had uh, uh, Lee Scott and Andy Stern all, again, uh, singing out of the same hymnal, uh, environmental NGOs and power company CEOs. Uh, so I think th this is a moment where uh, we can uh, move forward and, and pass uh, energy legislation and pass it uh, expeditiously. Uh, and then finally, I would just note uh, several of the speakers uh, brought this up uh, during the, or several of the people participating in the, in the session brought this up. The way broadband unleashed the new economy on telecommunications, I think we're really at the cusp of, a, of, an, of unleashing uh, through the use of more efficiency uh, it, at the consumer end and at the building end uh, and more transmission to move uh, clean renewable power from the places where it's stranded in the southwest and the midwest uh, to market uh, in our, our big cities as well as uh, offshore wind. Uh, we're really at the moment where uh, we heard so much bad news about the economy. I think today's session gave us some hope that there will be good news through the investments that we can make in these new technologies will really power us forward and uh, I think provide enormous uh, uh, re both uh, benefit to consumers and opportunity for people who want to work in this new green economy. So with that, why don't I start by taking questions. Go ahead. Please identify. Can you identify yourself? Well, we're going to make an announcement on that late this week, um, so we'll, we'll make that announcement then. But you should be aware that what we're 
talking about doing is making it possible for this energy that we're creating all over, can create all over the United States to take it where it's needed. And we, you know, we, for example, the uh, state of Nevada is 87% owned by the federal government. We have potential there with geothermal, wind, and solar. But we can't use it all. So we need, that's just one example of how we need to be able to take that energy where it's needed. And that's what my legislation will encompass. Yes? Governor's been a little busy. They've been doing their meetings here. Uh, but of course, and that's why uh, John Podesta mentioned that we had here the person that is in charge of all the state regulators. He said he has a small Congress. I think he said 253 state regulators he's, he is uh, responsible to. So yes, we're aware of that. That's why we had him here. But we're going to move beyond, and that's part of the conversation today, of one state being able to hold up forever uh, something that needs to be done for the rest of the country. I didn't mention that. I guess that must be the names. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, and I just spoke to the, the president of the uh, Central Bank Association. He said the guy with the beard? Uh, yes. Okay. And he said that actually uh, it cannot do uh, the title implementation that you want to do in your bill uh, through solely through eminent domain or federal power. So there's some disagreement there. How do you propose to, uh, to uh, go through that? He, re he represents he represents 253 state regulators. Whatever we pass at the federal level trumps all that. Okay. Yes. Senator Burris is a United States senator. He, as I read and as I understand, they're taking and they're investigating this on the state level in Springfield. They're looking at it in Chicago. And the state ethics, I mean, the Senate Ethics Committee is taking a look at this. Uh, he's a United States Senator. I'm going to work with him to the best of my ability. Yes. Well, I think one of the things changes was elections that took place in November. Uh, we have 59 senators, or soon will have when we finish the situation in Minnesota. But having said that, uh, we do not want the global warming legislation to be a democratic bill. We want it to be a bipartisan bill. And we, <coughs> we know that in years past, one of the advocates for doing something about this has been John McCain, and he still believes in that. And I think that we're going to work very hard to make sure that the legislation that we work on it'll, after we do our first energy bill that will come out of the Energy Committee, that is the Global Warming Bill later this year, will be one that will have bipartisan support. That's my goal. I think that's what the American public needs, and I think that's what the world needs. <coughs> yes? <coughs> you wait and see. <laughs> Yes. My publication has run out on that. You better get going. Go ahead. Uh, the Well, we, we discussed a lot today, but we didn't discuss everything today. We know that one of the things that we're going to look for in the future is a legacy issue that was introduced in this Congress, and we put in our economic recovery package, and that's something dealing with high-speed rail. There are at least five corridors in the country today that are ready to develop high-speed rail. One, of course, that I'm very familiar with is between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Right now, to move the trucks from LA to Las Vegas and the other way some kind sometimes gets held up for a long period of time on that road 
And this is taking away from the product productivity of our country. That's why we need high-speed rail. We're the only industrialized nation in the world that doesn't have a high-speed rail uh, platform that's modern and new. Uh, and we're going to do that. We, we're happy we have Amtrak, but everyone recognizes that it is antiquated, old, needs a lot of repair. So we didn't talk specifically about high-speed rail, but we uh, certainly are aware of it as an issue. One last question. I'm not going to couple those. I'm going to do them separate and apart. I've made the decision that I think that there are two separate issues, and uh, we, we need to make these as easy to do as possible. We have a lot that needs to be done with something that will come out of the Energy Committee alone. I called all the committees who had jurisdiction of this together uh, a few weeks ago, and it was decided at that time by all committees, some having overlapping jurisdiction, that we would move a bill out of Senator Bingaman and um, Lisa Murkowski's committee, Energy Committee, and that would deal with efficiency, a renewable portfolio standard. We would try to get into maybe some, uh, s some something dealing with the highway to transmit electricity. That's what that would be. And then we will get into a later time that something that's very complicated alone, and there's no need to put this other stuff on it, and that is the uh, carbon capture and all that kind of stuff. So that will be strictly uh, climate change legislation. Thank you very much. Thank you.